Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ananias the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today, because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how is this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. O oh God, you are my shepherd. I shall not be in want. You make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. You revive my soul and guide me along right pathways for the sake of your name. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of God forever. Second reading is from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before God whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what he pleases. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. 
just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Savior, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who creates and redeems and makes all things new. Amen. So, what is this about sheep and shepherds in today's lessons? The Lord is my shepherd, says the psalmist. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. And we all fasten immediately on the image of sheep. I mean, who wants to be a sheep? Parents do not encourage their children to grow up and be sheep. Grown ups do not put up affirmations to remind ourselves to be more ovine in our dealings today. There is no such thing as a self made sheep. And as an image, for more or less urban people, it just seems lacking in the 21st century. Because sheep just follow along with the flock and no one expects them to work at being good sheep or better sheep. So what does any of this have to do with our religion or our faith as Christians? The Lord is my shepherd. Some years ago, the New York Times did a study about churches and the people who join them. And these are still extremely secular times. And as it turns out, the wisdom among non-believers was that people come to church because they were indoctrinated as children. They were raised that way, but this study says, nope, that's not so. In looking at about 3000 children who had been raised unaffiliated with any church, the vast majority of them chose to join one later. And the researchers asked why? To get ahead, to be like their peers, because they underwent startling conversions? None of the above. According to the Pew study, people who had not been raised in any church joined the church because their spiritual needs were not being met, not in their work, not in their marriages, 
and not presumably in any of the other passions or activities they tried. Which brings us back to the subject of sheep in today's scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd. Frederick Beekner once wrote a meditation on today's 23rd Psalm that hits all of this squarely. Like sheep, he said, we get hungry and we get hungry for more than just food. We get thirsty for more than just drink. Our souls get hungry and thirsty. And in fact, it is often that sense of inner emptiness that makes us know we have souls in the first place. There is nothing that the world has to give us. There is nothing that we have to give to each other even that ever quite fills our hearts. But once in a while, that emptiness, inner emptiness is filled. And that is part of what this psalm means, I think, by saying that God is a shepherd. It means that like a shepherd, God feeds us. God feeds the part of us which is hungriest and most in need of feeding. The Lord is my shepherd. That means more than just God feeds us with food that matters. I was looking at the scripture today and thinking of 10 years ago this week when I was walking a friend and a former parishioner through the last stages of a terrible throat cancer. And when I took Pam to the hospital a week earlier for a procedure that might have prolonged her life without saving it, she told me she wasn't afraid to die. And I quote, God is in charge and you have assured me that God loves me. So what do I have to fear? And that I think is the point. What this Psalm says and what my friend got was that God as shepherd is invested in the life of the sheep. It isn't that there are no enemies, no dangers, no risks, no hungers we can't fill ourselves. It's that God is not on their side. God is on our side. God was not on the side of Pam's cancer, not on the side of the enemies of life and meaning not on the side of her fear for how her family and staff and dogs would be cared for without her. God was on her side and the side of love. And therefore she felt that she could have confidence in the outcome. And she did. The Lord is my shepherd. We can take it even further. I'm sure I've told you this before, but when I was a very small child, my mother would read me this psalm, not every night, but almost. Um, I always worried about the line that said, surely goodness and mercy would follow me all the days of my life. Because in Kansas, surely is pronounced Shirley. And I had an Aunt Shirley and I didn't want her following me for the rest of my life. Other than that, this Psalm, when I studied it as a grown up, I learned that the Hebrew word translated follow is really something more like pursue, pursue. Instead of tagging after us like puppies, as somebody suggested, Psalm 23 tells us that God's goodness and mercy will pursue us like hounds of heaven, if need be, all the days of our lives. And that is a significant piece of theology. Because it means that we believe God will not only pursue us, 
God will ultimately catch us with love and redeem us. As happened, I think, for my friend. Those of you who know the children's book, The Runaway Bunny, can read some of the same theology there. Or if you remember a Broadway play called Wit uh, about a woman with cervical cancer who ended up finally understanding John Dunn. She was, as to, she was, she was a Dunn scholar. Uh, but sheep and shepherds. This is about, all about our very real lives. As individual people who know more than we would like about walking through the fear of the valley of the shadow of death. And fear that we may not have something we need. And about even our life as a congregation, a community of people drawn together as a flock that sometimes fears and worries and forgets that we have a shepherd who will not lose us. There is not a one of us without fears and not a one of us without anxieties. And what God says to us today is never mind. Never mind about all of that. I'm with you. I'll handle it. And what Jesus says to us today is I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd who loves you, who knows you, and who will keep you safe and whole, whatever situation in which you find yourself, and no matter what. This is our strong and reasonable and holy hope based on these scriptures and our own history that God is a faithful shepherd, always seeking, always finding, there in our struggles, there in the midst of our enemies, always present and always saving. The Lord is my shepherd, we proclaim today. And we know that it is true. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of our aid, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, your, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please give your neighbors a sign of peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever God. and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. And therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, 
and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, according to... <laughs> Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our savior the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. In Christ and with Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we pray in the words of our Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, you Lord, unite us. Unite us in this sign. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. to the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite all those who are unable to receive the consecrated bread and wine this day, but who long for the grace and blessing of God through our savior, Jesus Christ, to join me in this prayer for spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, for your blessed body and blood are offered this day. I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and for all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in this holy sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Let us pray.
May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with new life and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love wherever they may be in God's kingdom this day and forevermore. Amen. He is not here, he is risen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.